here's a video that's showing you a multi-step type problem or multi-part type of problem that can be on the chapter 4 test on integration. So I, what's nice about this chapter, it, it, what this particular problem, it combines the beginning part of the chapter, what we would have done in 4.1, with the later part of the chapter, what we would have done in 4.4, all in one problem. And you will see a question like this on your test. So what you have here is they're giving you several pieces of information. They're giving you a second derivative. They're giving you an initial condition of the first derivative and of the original function. And part A is just asking to find the function. So we know we have to work backwards within our integration. So I'm going to start up here, integrate my 2x. When I do that, I'm going to get my derivative. So it is helpful when you're doing multi-step problems to label as you go what you're doing. When I do that, I get my derivative to equal x squared plus c. Then I use this piece of information to figure out c. That means if I put 1 in here and 0 in here, that means c is 1. So my first derivative is x squared plus 1. Then the next question, or the next piece of the, of the question is then integrate again. So if I integrate again, I get the original function. And my original function is x to the third over 3 plus x plus c. Using this piece of information, I can figure out what c is. So I'm going to put 3 here. And then 2 cubed over 3 plus 2 plus c. Here's where being able to use a calculator on this test will make it a little easier. You definitely could do this in your head, but it is a little easier if we can just go into our calculator and figure out what 2 to the third divided by 3 is. And then add 2 to that. So we have, we end up with this being 14 thirds plus c. Subtract 14 thirds from both sides, so 3 minus that 14 thirds, giving me a c value of negative 5 thirds. So the answer to part a is that my function is x cubed over 3 plus x minus 5 thirds. So that would have been something that you would have done on the last quiz because that was the beginning of the chapter material. Part B is now asking you to go a step further and to find area. So I want to know the area bounded by the f function. That's the one we just found, we just wrote down. And my interval is going from 0 to 3. So that means I need to set up a definite integral going from 0 to 3. And it's the function I just found. So it's the x cubed over 3 plus x minus 5 thirds. So you really want to make sure when you're using a function that you had to previously find that you do the earlier steps correctly so you're not working with an incorrect function. So I'm going to integrate again. So I get x to the fourth over 12 plus x to the second over 2 minus 5 thirds x. And again, I don't need a plus c for this because I'm putting in numerical values right away. I'm getting a numerical answer. So at this point, I'm putting 3 in everywhere. And I'm really going to use my calculator to help me here. So I'm going to have 3 to the fourth divided by 12, plus 3 squared, divided by 2, minus 5 thirds times 3. And when I do that, I'm going to get a fraction answer. It's a little easier to work with. I get 25 fourths, minus, when I put 0 in, I get 0. So that is my area. So I would say area equals 25 fourths. Um, you can say unit squared, you don't have to. You could also write it as 6.25, which is the decimal equivalent. Finally, part C. Part C is actually really easy after you do part B because area is the majority of the work for average value. Average value, in a very simplistic way of writing it, is just the area that you get using your integration divided by your width, which is B minus A. So if I look at my width, my width is 3. So I'm going to take 25 fourths and divide it by 3. Or a faster way to do that on your calculator is to multiply by a third. So I have 25 fourths on my calculator. I'm just going to hit divide it by 3, or I could hit times 1 third, giving me an average value of 25 twelfths. What this means is, over this interval, this function is more above the x-axis, having an average height of 25 twelfths. What the area tells us is that the area is more above the axis, because we're getting a positive answer. And that positive answer is rec 
referencing the location where the area is located. So this is a great problem. It gives you a lot of different things. You could actually do even more with this. You could look at these things and talk about derivative things where you want to know well, when's the deriv what is the derivative at certain values. So you could do a lot of things from the previous chapter in this same problem, talking about well, when does the derivative equal 0 or when, does, when is it increasing or decreasing. All those things that were discussions in Chapter 3 could still be done here, but this is really showing you the new stuff. How do we use integration to answer these types of questions? Questions.